decide whether you want to talk 10 minutes, 50 minutes, or 20 minutes. But we will have just five minutes or 10 minutes or 50 minutes for discussion after each uh, uh, presentation. So I would propose for, uh, for the chair, for the uh, let me go for, for 50 minutes. 50. For 50 minutes for each presentation. And then uh, we will just be assigned to the speaker. And uh, then the speaker has to decide whether they want to talk five minutes more or just stop talking. And then we will just have no time for discussion because we have six presentations and I think everybody should have some, at least some time to present this uh, paper. So, well, I don't think we have six because I think uh, Dr. Santos is here. I don't know. I'm not just here. <laughs> sure. So let's, let's look. Who is here? Who's presenting? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm presenting. Yeah. We're presenting one, two, three. We're yeah. one, yeah. Yeah. one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four. And well, uh, Elias here? Elias, I saw him this morning. Right, five. So we have five presentations, so we will have uh, 30 minutes for each presentation. Yeah? 30 minutes for each presentation. Yeah. 30. 30. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Five presentations. One is busy. You have more time. Yeah, I, I will take that. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you starting now? Oh, yeah. I'll try to do it. Actually. Um, yeah. Is it okay? We just go for uh, thirty minutes for each presentation. Twenty and ten minutes discussion, maybe. I think we had the same problem this, uh, this morning. And yeah. uh, if you go with twenty minutes for the talk. Yeah, and then that, that, that works quite well, I think. <laughs> There's some people talk on that. Yeah, should I introduce you then? Or are you Just say some words about me. Yeah, so this is Jens Mesel. Uh, he did a PhD at the University of Magdeburg on the process of Bologna, uh, the many voices of the Bologna process. Um, he now worked, uh, uh, was the project leader of a project on financial experts discourse at the University of Mainz and the uh, University of Warwick. Um, he's a sociologist that works basically with uh, post -stru -stru structuralist uh, theory and uh, polygamy analysis. Can you help me with uh, something? Yes, thank you very much. Um, Yes, uh, this presentation I will present some results from my from my recent uh, research project on economics. Um, um, I will, this presentation I will, I will show how a particular logic emerges, which I will call uh, it isn't it isn't dispositive in economics. Um, it isn't it dispositive basically refers to um, three aspects of economics as a scientific discipline. First. Um, it refers to the, to, to the current social and discursive logic of elitism. Second, it refers to the global dimension of uh, uh, academic work. And uh, third, it refers to its foreign relations, to the relations between science and society. Um, in the first, uh, in the first uh, part, the first section, I will present some research from economics, um, um, uh, basically from, from, from uh, social studies of economics. In the second step, I will uh, present a uh, methodology which uh, I use in my, in my analysis, which I will call discourse of Marxism or um, uh, a discourse of political economy of economics. In the third and fourth session, I will present um, some data from my, uh, from my, from my research. And in the, in the first part, I will present the, forming, uh, the, te the technologies of forming the decision dispositive within economics as an economic discipline. And in the fourth uh, part, I will uh, talk about the sort of context of economics. Um, and last but not least, um, I will uh, just start with, uh, with, uh, with uh, presenting the social logic, social uh, with presenting um, economics as a kind of social discourse of power uh, logic. Um, yes, um, typically, um, uh, the sociology of science is studying disciplines as a, uh, as a kind of social system which is characterized as an um, autonomous. Uh, uh, Social sphere uh, characterized by inner orientation uh, uh, compared to, uh, to professions, for example. Um, and usually, uh, disciplines are studied, um, for example, by Lamont or Plotzitina as evaluative or epistemic <coughs> But if we look at um, economics or at, at 
at, at the comparative perspective on, on different disciplines, showed that um, economics is, uh, is a special discipline. It cannot be compared simply uh, to other uh, social science disciplines because um, um, the prestige principle, for example, um, shows that economics is not as open as uh, other disciplines, for example, sociology and psychology. And also, um, um, power in the way that uh, how prestige works and is recognized in economics is organized in a different way in economics. And this very, very quick um, 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 characteristic shows that um, economics is not, cannot be studied in the same way as sociology, uh, uh, physics, or chemistry it has been studied in several in the last uh, decades by the sociology of, of uh, sciences. Um, when we have a look at um, a small look at uh, uh, different um, research on economics, then we can distinguish different uh, perspectives or different um, research results. Uh, Lee and Al are, are talking about a capitalist, talking about economics as a capitalist discipline, which is characterized by a high degree of homogenization, high degree of concentration of power and hierarchies. <clears throat> um, economics is basically basically based on a, a neoclassical model, which is um, pushing out uh, heterodox approaches from, from, uh, from, from uh, academic research. Um, for Kahn, in contrast, uh, talks about economics as a discipline which, is, which, have, which has a dominant position within the, within the, uh, the social sciences. A discipline, uh, economics, is in a superior position because it is uh, due to its uh, individualistic world views, its better economic situation, and uh, its confidence to find solutions for uh, social problems. Leveron has shown that economics uh, is producing um, a kind of legitimate discourse for society. So, according to Leveron, economics is a kind of lender of last resort for, for the construction of social legitimacy, which means that economics is basically a, a, a discipline which is controlled by society, which is not autonomous in the way how sociology or psychology is autonomous, but is basically controlled by society, which is producing a kind of Discourse, discourse which can be used in uh, the wider political economy. And other studies uh, from, from, uh, from political economy and you know, sociology have shown that, that economics is used in, for example, in bank context or in political context to uh, legitimize uh, decisions which are basically difficult to decide. And <clears throat> when I have a brief look on these uh, perspectives from my own research, then, um, um, then I would say that economics is not just uh, uh, is, is not just uh, characterized by a pure uh, it's, it's, not, it's, it's, not, it's not a closed discipline as, as Lee and Al uh, have uh, talked about it, but it is furthermore characterized by uh, two phases. One phase is directed to uh, the culture of research, and the other phase is directed to um, a, a kind of myth construction. So heterodox approaches in economics can participate with, in, in the discipline when they follow basically a modeling paradigm, the paper form, and uh, the top John logic. Um, politicism is based on, on a dialectics between academia, politics, media, and the economy. Um, it is a myth, which, a myth which it creates a symbolic capital as an export article, which is used in non-academic economic expert discourses and transformed in new forms of capitalism. Elitism in economics is based on a demand from society. It is not in a position of superiority, as the law has shown, to other social science disciplines, but uh, in a position of exteriority. So um, academic freedom and self-determination basically emerge from interiority. Um, and to live on, I would say, uh, yes, of course, economics is characterized, is characterized by, um, by external determination, but we cannot speak of a, of a simple heteronomous uh, field, but I would rather talk um, about an overdetermined discourse of power and, and knowledge. Um, in the following presentation, in the remaining five minutes, I will present, I will show, I will present the following thesis. The assessment is positive as a form of academic capitalism emerged in the last decades of the 20th century as a, global, as a globalization phenomenon. Its operation and logic is based on a transepistemic field of economic expert discourse consisting of heteronomous, heterogeneous discursive logics and complex processes of symbolic capital production circulating 
production circulation, conversion, and accumulation. Um, in my in my work, I basically use an approach which I would, or an idea which I would call um, discourse of Marxism. This idea is basically following different uh, um, different theories from political economy, which have uh, uh, which have outlined the cultural dimension for the study of power in society. And this um, in this um, um, study, I'm basically interested in the three aspects of economic expert discourses. First, each social context of economic expert discourses is characterized by, by a particular discourse of position, logic, and complex, and complex structure. So in each social world where economic experts operate, the different discourses are at work. Second, discourse, discourse of position and practices are understood as power strategies, which can be analyzed as capital production and conversion processes. So in each field, not only discourses operate, but also capital, in, 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 as, as symbolic capital, as populist capital, as political capital, is used, transformed, and, and enforced in order to create power, uh, power and conflict structures. And third, this capital is not just capital which is, uh, uh, which is working in one field, but this capital is rather circulating around this trans field of economic uh, of, of discourse and power and must be translated into different forms and used in different contexts. So if we have a brief look at what I would call an elitism dispositive, uh, the elitism dispositive has a very, very, very short history. It started basically in uh, the 70s from the US Department. It can be characterized as a kind of global model circulating around different uh, economic contexts and uh, is basically adapted by different uh, uh, strategies starting um, in the 80s in the UK and then Germany, France, Italy and so on. Um, so if we uh, have a look at the different technologies which construct these elitism dispositive, then we can basically distinguish between four different technologies. First technology, what I would call evaluation, refers to a discourse of classification. Discourse of classification is basically used in economics by rankings of journals and rankings of publications. In Germany, we uh, probably know the Helmsberg ranking. In the UK, the Diamond List is very, very common. Um, these discourses of classification construct symbolic hierarchies, um, which can be used in, in uh, research assessment policy processes. A second uh, important strategy which is used and which is, which is, which is basically forming this elitism dispositive is what I would call magnification. Um, magnification refers to the fact that elitism is only possible in departments uh, which have a critical mass of professors. So, we, at least in the UK, and in Germany, or in Germany's different worlds, elitism, uh, as I've studied in my, in my research, emerges basically in Departments, economics departments, which have more than 20 or which have more than 20, up to 30 professors. So you need a critical mass of professors in order to apply this globalization strategy. Um, so in this, for this magnification strategy, professors basically, or the professors are replaced as the main reference academic discourse by academic locations. It's more important than for Oxford, that would be professor or minor professor or whatever. Uh, the third strategy is uh, uh, what I call concentration. Concentration refers to the fact that all the things we probably know as we know as <coughs> academic resources like <coughs> positions, money, connections, funds, and so on, are concentrated on these departments. And the combination of magnification and concentration basically transforms um, symbolic hierarchies into material hierarchies. And <coughs> the first strategy is what we call departmentalization, and departmentalization refers to um, an organization's change in academic, in academic world, meaning that um, institutes with professors become departments with members. And these departments with members develop a top down of productivity. Um, so if you compare, for example, professors at like Mannheim with professors at uh, Harvard University or Harvard University, you can see that Professors at, at, at bigger universities have a higher uh, uh, journal productivity. So they are all producing, they are all publishing, but professors at 
big institutes, <coughs> big departments publish only for top, top journals. So departments create or fund uh, graduate schools in order to uh, uh, reproduce um, uh, uh, new stuff. They become scientific accumulation and the locus of the establishment of popular networks. And when we, when all four strategies are uh, working together, then we can talk about the accumulation of economic capital. So magnification, evaluation, concentration, and depotentization are basically the four technologies which must be operating in order to construct what I would call accumulation process of capital, meaning that we enter now a process from, we are now going from a kind of feudal form, or pre-modern form of academic work um, into a kind of capitalist form. And this academic capitalism, of course, is based on a formula which can be explained and shown, and we can also discuss later about this, this, this formula. Um, in the first step, simple resources like professorships, money, PhD students, editorial board positions, and so on, all things we probably know, usually know as academic positions, are transformed into academic capital. And this basically means that they are now used to construct, to transfer, or to, to translate a symbolic hierarchy into a material hierarchy. And in the second step, this capital must be used to construct an um, academic class society. So to, 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 to concentrate more capital in the next uh, 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 step and to establish a kind of elite department, to establish uh, 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 academic resources as means for the reproduction of social inequality. And this is basically uh, the second step, the step from simple capital to real capital. And at this moment, we can talk about an accumulation process, and at this moment, we uh, uh, enter a, a kind of academic capitalism, at least in the case of economics. And in the last step, this factory, which is now constructed, uh, this factory, which is characterized by this is dispositive, is constructing um, symbolic capital in, 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 in terms of star economies, dollar prices, and prestige, and this can be used to, 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 to circulate, to leave the academic world, to circulate in different contexts, for example, in media and politics, in order to be transformed in other forms of capital. This is basically the way, the reason, <coughs> why this is just academic class society in the UK, uh, uh, in terms of research funds uh, from 70 departments, just 10 get all money. In Germany, you can, uh, you can see uh, here, uh, uh, there's a much different, uh, uh, Hundreds of publication productivity in mega departments compared to smaller departments. And, um, but this symbolic capital, which is now produced in the academic world, is now leaving uh, uh, in some fields of uh, the academic world and can be reused in different world, in different contexts, in order to exercise power. And in this context, of course, this capital must be transformed and translated into different forms. And I can talk about this uh, translation process later. I have also an example here, but I think. Uh, uh, comes along. Um, of course, when we now just, 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 just uh, uh, we have, we have a kind of academic capitalism formula which shows how resources are transformed into capital, and capital is producing as a kind of factory, symbolic capital producing prestige, the prestige principle. Now, we, um, we, uh, this formula is embedded into the wider political economy, and um, on the one hand, symbolic capital must be Transformed, translated into populist, political, and so on capital. And this is based on, uh, on the discourse of conversion of capital into sources for legitimacy. But this process, in turn, is based on um, a social demand for capital as a source for legitimacy. Um, why, why do we have this, this, this uh, kind of uh, uh, this demand for, for a new form of legitimacy? I think this demand, this social demand, uh, in, in, in the political world, in the media world, but also in, 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 in the business world, is based on on process which is usually uh, studied as or understood as a kind of education or evangelism process, um, where in society uh, academic titles, degrees, and other forms of credentials become more and more important in order to create jobs, to create uh, social positions, and to create legitimacy for uh, uh, for 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 for, um, for power in society. Other studies have shown that financial certification becomes important, um, accounting, auditing, and public management, all these different strategies, strategies and processes in, in society are forming um, an environment in which legitimacy is no longer based on something like modernity, welfare state, uh, 
democracy, nothing like this, but more law on, on credentials which are created by academic authorities. And this social change, this postmodern moment, uh, starting in the 70s, probably, or the 60s, um, is the basis for the demand for symbolic capital. Uh, we can also study this development in, in, uh, in um, economic policy, for example, German research institutes uh, entered into a process of uh, 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 proving their social equality in the 90s. Um, several institutes were closed in order to, to, to push them on the way to, to become more academic excellent. Central grants are recruiting more and more academic researcher. Um, um, of course, to create a, a social institutions, especially in Europe, uh, the joint and CSP are based on more and more economic expert, expertise as a kind of a, a symbolic form of capital, and the, the Nobel Prize can be can be regarded as a kind of global expert degree, which is awarded to to people with the most the highest form of uh, social legitimacy. So, yeah. So, expert degrees basically re replace uh, expert knowledge as a kind of power instrument, because knowledge which has been developed in the last 100 years from social sciences and, and economics has been, uh, uh, is, now, is now distributed throughout the field. Everybody is, is in a position to apply Keynesianism, to apply any kind of uh, economic forecasting, and knowledge is no longer a resource for power, but titles become more important in knowledge exercise power. And um, yes, um, so if we now just go to a small case study, then we can probably probably see how, how experts in the media world use symbolic capital in order to create um, support um, for particular positions, particular ideas, and for particular uh, uh, political means. So economists like this is my favorite example, has been a zinc. It's usually, it's usually applying a strategy which I would call multi-reference or multiple reference. So the discourse of Pastor Zinn is basically playing with three registers. On the one hand, he's going for, 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 for everyday, life, everyday life knowledge, so using words which everybody understands. On, on the other hand, he's using um, um, political signs in order to become a member of a particular conflict group within the political field. And on the other hand, this is basically the third aspect of this multiple reference, <coughs> reference strategy is, of course, Anton Azin has a lot of symbolic capital, he has a lot of, uh, a lot of academic capital, um, which he can use and which makes him an economic expert compared, compared to other experts. And when we just look at uh, Suiza and Greece, they are all also experts. Donald Trump is an expert, and as an expert he can speak, he can say whatever he wants. So it doesn't matter what he says, but it matters whether he speaks in the name of, 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 of Economics as a kind of a symbolic, uh, powerful uh, social group. Yeah, okay, to conclude. Um, the latest used in mm -hmm. economics is an effect of the trans systemic field of economic expert discourse. It is part of a complex discourse and positioning strategy which cannot be reduced to pure academic debates. Um, second, elitism is constructing global hierarchies in economics which transform the academic work of economics into a factory for the production of symbolic capital. And third, the discursive dimension of it's connected to complex power relations which connect academia with the political economy. Here, symbolic capital from academia is converted and re articulated in a heterogeneous field of power and discourse. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there are questions? Yeah, uh, I would like to thank you. It's very interesting. I would like to read it. Uh, with to take time to yeah, I, yeah. uh, uh, <coughs> I have some two small questions. One is uh, uh, popular ca capital or uh, the other place you said uh, populist capital. Could you tell me something more about what it means and how it's connected to Bourdieu's theory? Yeah. And the second one is uh, uh, I don't know at that moment, but uh, I think that you said that uh, there is a demand for symbolic capital. Uh, I would like also yeah. to clarify it. So I'll start with the, second, with the second question. I think the demand is coming from uh, so each society needs something, some, <coughs> some, 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 some instance, some, some point of reference where legitimacy comes from. 
for example, in democracy, legitimacy, legitimacy comes from, from the will of the people. People want some security, economic welfare, whatever. Or it comes from ideas, for example, uh, uh, the project of the nation state. All these instances are there in society, able to construct something like the general form of legitimacy. And in, uh, in the reign of globalization, this instances became more and more problematic. So people don't vote, don't know, uh, they're no longer interested in the classical, the classical way how the nation state is, is, uh, uh, is constructing identities, is constructing futures, is constructing biographies, and this is basically what we call globalization. And this, in this lack, uh, uh, the university is, is going to. So for example, when we uh, just look back in the 50s, 60s and 70s, education and titles became more and more important in order to reproduce social positions. But this education principle is now, uh, is now a part of a wider, the wider uh, 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 and, and bigger form of, 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 of uh, the construction of social legitimacy. For example, um, um, even research institutes must prove their academic excellence. So there is a, 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 a new a lack for legitimacy, which is basically used by the university, or which is basically called for new new form of legitimacy. And this can be um, academic capital in, in the widest sense. Um, and this is basically the reason why society is looking for some people who could be could stand for this kind of, of legitimacy. It's still a process for, for searching for new forms of legitimacy. It's a, I think it is a sign of crisis. It is not, it's not, not a new form of stability. And in this process, of course, then the university can be, uh, can be one candidate. And especially in, in, in political debates and discourses, um, uh, this call for new form of legitimacy was basically the main reason why we observed this hierarchization process in economics. Hierarchization is an effect of politics and not of internal, of internal debates, internal uh, processes. This is basically my, the main idea. And populist capital, um, this is, yes, I've, I've called popular or populist capital basically um, when you refer to values, people, uh, things people believe, for example, peace or a, a, a saving or a good future, very general things that people believe uh, in, uh, which are generally re recognized as good values. This is what we call populist capital. If you are able to, to uh, play with this populist capital, then you can connect your ideas, your academic standing with these populist ideas, and then you will be maybe successful in, in this course. Thank you. So why is this capital, populist capital? Um, I'm talking about capital because I'm interested in the way how discourses exercise power. This is still, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still searching for, 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 for some new words. It's not, it's not a, Finished, a finished concept. I use Bourdieu in order to to, uh, to 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 show how words and discourses can be used as power strategies. And Bourdieu has just introduced the category of cultural capital or symbolic capital in order to to um, criticize Marxism. And Marxism has probably used as to money and state um, and maybe some 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 uh, importance of relations. But cultural capital is basically the idea that beyond uh, 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 beyond uh, false conscious or something like this, there, is, uh, there are processes in, in society which are not reducible to these classical material forms of power. So this was the idea of cultural capital. And now I use this cultural or symbolic capital in order to, 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 to study uh, processes where uh, power is now exercised through different forms of social cultural uh, uh, um, um, forces. This is the reason why I use uh, the, the, the term capital. But I say capital is always connected to discourses. There is no, there is no discourse of capital, but there is capital is a conversion strategy uh, uh, driven by discourses. This is, like, this is the main idea of uh, this uh, discourse of, 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 of economics. Uh, uh, idea. I just asked because I was wondering if you, if one could accumulate a populist capital or how that looks like. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to, 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 you can also accumulate money, but uh, you can also, also, also lose your money. It is not, there is no fixed, uh, I think it's also the idea to, to um, just think about more fluid forms of power. 
which are not, which cannot be accumulated and put to, to, to a bank, like that gold or something like this. This is a you can always lose. So populous capital, you can, can accumulate populous capital, but you can also lose it. Yeah, but how does it look like if I give that populous capital? In terms of uh, recognition, public, public recognition of media. So media recognition, for example. I think there are different forms to measure it somehow. But I think it's really good. It's, it's, it's more theory. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you very much from me, too. Uh, one small question when you talked about magnification, you said that it needs, sorry, when you talked about magnification, you said that it needs a critical mass of professors. Um, what does it mean? What, at one institution or in the whole field of economics? Or? Yeah. And this is basically the, uh, the German world of economics. And uh, we have 90, 90 departments, uh, institutes in Germany. Um, and we can, we can distinguish them in two, in four groups. The first group, five departments, um, where more than 25, 20 percent of all German professors are working in these five departments. This is Cologne, uh, Mannheim, Frankfurt, uh, Munich, and Bonn. And in these five institutes with more than 20 professors, these processes of concentration and democratization are possible because you need a critical mass. Um, I've also studied uh, Oxford. Um, and Oxford had five professors uh, until 1998. Then they started into this process of departmentalization, hired uh, 15 professors from Warwick, uh, LSE, and so on, with a lot of money. And then they created a department with at least 50 professors, 50 assistant professors, and 30 uh, PhD students. So this was, just was the main basis to become to become a successful, uh, to enter into a successful process of organization. Uh, can I ask you about um, the relation between economics and other disciplines? <coughs> One of the things that this model has done in my discipline, which is philosophy, is it's led to homogenization. Maybe that's a term that you would accept. So I would wonder if homogenization in economics, in terms of research in these top ranked journals, because what we find in philosophy is that in order to get into the journals and whatnot, you need to homogenize your research. So that you, and these people are not stupid, right? If you went to Oxford and you asked them, well, you know, where are the new ideas coming from? The first thing they'll say is, not from us. We're homogenized. New ideas come from outside. We just take them and then use them and capitalize on them. So do you think that uh, this process of homogenization uh, that's happening in philosophy is also happening at economics? Um, I think uh, I think economics is very close connected to uh, the questions of the state, the question of, of, of global politics, the question of media, and economists are used also in business context. So it's very close connected to uh, uh, society, and I think the impact which has which society has on economics compared to philosophy or sociology or psychology is simply different. So I think, of course, yes, there is an organization process in, in, in all disciplines, um, um, but I'm, I'm skeptical whether these processes are all similar, or all moving to, to, to a similar direction. I think, I think we can observe different, different disciplines, different processes of modernization or of globalization, um, and which probably uh, I'm not comparable to what is going on in economics, but I'm not sure. It could be a just a matter of study, a bit of research in the same way. I think we should just Yeah, you have to finish it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>